Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm gonna show you 10 Edge TX Pro Tips. Before we go any further, I need to let you know I'm on Edge TX 2.11.0. That is the latest version of Edge TX when this video posted. The first tip I'm going to show you relates to trimming your model. Edge TX gives you control over the grain of your trim switch. So we get there by pressing the model button and we'll scroll down to trims. And notice we have options here under trim setup, coarse, medium, fine, extra fine, and exponential. Let's cover what these do. I'm gonna set it on exponential. I'm gonna leave the model set up. I'm gonna bring up my channel monitor and we're gonna trim the aileron. And notice right now I'm at 0% and at 1500 US, okay? So that is a centered stick and we're at 1500 US output. So I'm gonna hit the aileron trim one time and notice we're now at 1501. I'm gonna hit it a second time, we're at 1502. So we've incremented one microsecond per, per click. Now I'm gonna hit it a third time 1503, a fourth time 1504. So for the first four clicks, one microsecond per click. Now, when I hit it the fifth time, notice we jump to 1506. That's where the curve starts. So we're 1506, that's plus two. 1508 is plus two. And now we're at 11. So that's plus three. That illustrates an exponential curve that shows that they're increasing the number of steps in output for each click of trim. When I click it again, we're at 14, so that's three more. We do it again, we're at 18, now we're at four. And we do it again, we're at 23, that's five. So that curve is definitely going up. Now, if I just hold it and peg it all the way to the right, we stop at 1628 US, that's as far as we can go. So if we go back to the main screen, we can see my aileron trim is all the way over as far as it will go. So 1628 US, that's as far as we get with exponential trim. Now we'll go back to the model settings and we'll go to trim again and we'll set this instead of exponential to extra fine. And we'll go back to the monitor and I'm gonna reset the trim back down to center. Trim center. Okay, so we're back to trim center. 1500 US, 0% output. Now I'm gonna click the trim button one time and we go one microsecond. A second time, one microsecond. A third, one microsecond. Fourth. 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth. There is no exponential here. Every single click gives you one microsecond. And if I hold that trim switch all the way to the right, we again stop at 1628 US. So notice that the trim grain has no impact on the trim endpoint, only the curve in which we use to get there. So when you use fine grain, what that means is you have very fine grain control, but the range stays the same, basically 1500 to 1628. So you get 128 steps of trim using fine grain control. Now, if we switch over, let's put this back on the center. Trim center. Trim center. And we'll go back into our model settings and we'll try one more. We'll do course. Okay, so with course, we'll go back to the model settings bring up the monitor and we'll give it one click and notice we went eight microseconds. A second one, 16, now 24. So every one of them is eight microseconds. So we scroll all the way to the maximum trim. We're still at 1628 US, but at eight microseconds per step, that only gives us 16 steps of control. So if we go back, we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 we're back to center, so 16 steps of control. So that explains trim steps. You can start with coarse or medium, fine, extra fine or exponential, whichever one works for you. Just remember, it doesn't impact the range, only the curve that's used to get there. The next pro tip has to do with enabled features. Enabled features is really kind of a neat function because it lets you dispense with things that may not be interesting for you. The one example I like to use is for fly bar helis. I fly helicopters, but I have no fly bar helis, so I don't need the hel fly bar heli setup. If I click on model, you can see the second tab here is an H with a circle. That is for a fly bar setup. There are two ways I can deal with this. The first is in model settings. So if I click on the settings for this particular model and scroll down, notice there's an option in here called enabled features. I'll click on that, and then I'll scroll down and under heli setup, I'll just turn that off. 
Now, when I go back to my model tabs, notice that heli option is gone. That's one way I can deal with it. Another way I can deal with it is in the global setup for the radio. And we get there by pressing the system button and then the gear icon, and we can go down to enabled features and we can set heli setup off globally. Now, what that means is for every single model now, the heli setup tab will be gone. If you wanna turn it back on, you can do that in the model setting. So if you click on model and then scroll down to enabled features, notice that the heli setup says global off. If I wanna turn that back on just for this model, I can ignore the global setting and say, turn it on. And now when I turn it on, there it is. So enabled features gives you control in both the global settings that are radio wide, but you, you can override them in your model settings if you want to. Feature number three is auto power off. Normally when I land a plane, the first thing I do is secure the plane. So I park it, I disconnect the battery, and then I worry about the radio because we always want to leave the radio on when we have a battery connected to the airplane. A lot of times though, I'll get sidetracked. So if I leave the radio on, this feature is meant to deal with that. This kicks in when you have no trainer or telemetry link on the radio. To enable it, we'll click on the system button and we'll scroll over to the gear icon and then scroll down until you see power auto off. I have mine set for one minute right now. And again, if I have no telemetry, no trainer link, or I'm not interacting with the radio, then what'll happen is after one minute, the radio will power itself off. I'll give you a little time-lapse video to show you how it works in practice. There you go. The radio turned itself off after one minute of not touching the sticks or having a trainer or telemetry link. The next pro tip I'm gonna show you is how to customize your startup sound. On my desktop, I have an audio file called hello.wave. Let's go fly something. If you want to customize the startup sound on your radio, all you need is a hello.wave file that's compatible with EdgeTX. By the way, I take requests on my Discord in the Emily request channel. So if you have a startup sound you'd like, join my Discord and ask in the Emily request channel. But to put that on your radio, you'll navigate to your sounds folder and then pick your language. In my case, it's EN. And then you'll look for the system folder. And in the system folder, you'll notice there's already a file called hello.wave, and that is right there. If you wanna customize it, all you've gotta do is drop your own hello.wave file in that folder, and that's it. Now when you turn on your radio, let's go fly something. You'll hear your custom wave file. In my case, it says, let's go fly something. The fifth tip I'm gonna show you is how to quickly access your channel monitor. This is one of my favorites because I use a channel monitor a lot. From the main screen, all you have to do is long press this telemetry button on the bottom left. And there's your channel output monitor. Very nice. There are some other ways to do it as well, of course. From the main screen, you can press model and then model again, and that brings up the monitor. But if you just wanna see it from your home screen, a long press of the telemetry button, that brings it up for you. Nice tip. The sixth tip I'm gonna show you is how to enable or disable a special function from the context menu. You get there by pressing the model button and going over to your special functions. In my case, I've got two SF1 and SF2, both related to overrides. But let's say I don't wanna use SF1, I wanna just disable, disable it. I don't wanna delete it, I just wanna disable it for testing or because I don't wanna use it on this particular model. The way I can do that from the context menu is just quickly press on that line item and that brings up a context menu where I have options, edit, copy, disable. If I click disable, notice how the check mark is now gone from that item. If I wanna turn it back on, I can press that line again and hit enable. And when I do that, it puts a check mark in that special function. It's now enabled again. Pretty cool, right? The seventh tip I'm gonna show you has to do with resetting your flight session. Let's say you're gonna fly a model back to back and you wanna reset your telemetry variables and your timers. Before I show you this tip, a couple of quick notes. I've got my arming switch enabled, so I'm doing that to force a checklist item to pop up. And then also notice my timer, I'm at four minutes and four seconds, okay? So to reset our flight without powering off the radio, we simply press the Edge TX button, hit reset telemetry, and then reset session. Two things are gonna happen. The first one is it's gonna run through my checklist again. It says, hey, wait, man, your arming switch is on. You wanna turn that off. So I'll disable the aircraft. And then notice that I've got my timer reset to six minutes. It also resets any telemetry high and low values you already have on your radio. So really handy to do if you wanna fly back to back without turning the radio off and then on again, especially if you've already got the model plugged in. Tip number eight is list filters. 
I'm gonna press the system button and go over to my global functions and notice that I've got global functions here for high rates, medium rates, and low rates. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'll click edit. And the value here that I'm playing, this is playing a track and the value is rate high, it's right there. So I'm gonna click on that. And the list filter gives us the option to say, hey, if I'm looking, it used to, used to have to scroll, scroll through the whole list. But if you've got a really long list, now all you have to do is hit one of these list filters on the left, and that brings you to the characters that start with little a, capital A, through little d, capital D. And there we are, we're in that list of audio tracks that I've got. If I'm gonna go back to rate high, I can click on QT, and notice I'm right there at rate high. So I don't have to scroll through my entire list just to get to the R's. I've got a pick list filter right here. Just click on that. And if you got something that starts with numbers, you can click on that one and it'll show you any audio track that you've got with numbers. In this case, 100 miles per hour. If I wanna go back to rate high, I simply click Q to T and then hit rate high. Pretty cool, right? Tip number nine is inversion. This is a real time saver when you're setting up a model. I'm gonna click on my model button and go to my inputs. And notice I've got an aileron input that uses that's active when the rate switch is in the up position, okay? So my rate switch is SB, by the way. So let's say that I wanna duplicate this and I wanna use a setting for when the rate switch is not in the up position, that's inverted, inverted up. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this line item and I'm gonna hit copy. Then I'm gonna click that line item again and hit paste after. Now I'm gonna edit this line item and I'm gonna select my switch rate, and all I'm gonna do is hit this invert button right here, right, like that. That inverts the up position, which means when it's not up. That's, what, that's all that means. And notice what it does there is put an exclamation in front of that phrase or in front of that switch. That means not up. So if I click on that now, I've now set a value for my inputs that says, when my rate switch is up, then I want this line to be active. When my rate switch is not up, that's the X, exclamation, I want this line item to be active. So if I bring my rate switch to the middle position, see how that second item is now chosen? And if I bring it to my low position, that item remains chosen. I call that defensive programming, but the tip here is in how to use that invert function. And by the way, it also works for weights. So let's say for example, you have a weight of 100 and you say, I want negative 100. Well, instead of scrolling or pressing the button to go all the way to negative 100, all you have to do is hit that little blue button right there and that inverts the value. So now it's negative 100. Pretty cool tip. For tip number 10, I'm gonna show you how to recover some space on your SD card. All you have to do is open up your radio, click on the sounds folder, and notice there are languages in here that may not be appropriate for you. In my case, I've got French, and that one takes about seven megs. I've got DA, I'm not even sure what DA is. That's not Dutch, that's not German. That one takes 25 megs. I've got Czech in here, and that one takes another 10 megs. And I've got Chinese in here, and that one takes another 10 megs. So by deleting these audio files for languages that are not my native language, I can recover some space on my SD card. So delete them. This I'm gonna delete the Chinese one, the Czech one, the DA one. I'm not sure what that is. If you know, leave it in the comments. And then the French one, I'll delete that. And that leaves us with just English. And make sure you empty your trash when you do that. So empty your trash folder. That'll make sure those, those files are cleared off of that SD card. So in this case, I've recovered, what, about 50 megabytes or so, which is about 20% of the stock 256 megabyte SD card that comes on a TX16S. That wraps up my pro tips video for Edge TX 2.11.0. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.